All right, hey, hey from Finale's Customs, hey, these are rustic farmhouse tables, um, and you too can make these. These aren't that hard to make. These are 22 inches high, by 22 inches across, and 22 inches deep. They're made out of pine, uh, two by three for the frame, two by twos for the upside down Vs, one by 12 for the bottom shelves, and five quarter by 12 for the top shelves. These are pretty much square tables. Um, you can customize the color scheme or whatever you like. Uh, they're not that hard to make. Just take some patience, some tools, and I'll go over all the tools I use to make these and the steps as thorough as I can, you know, in a small, dark shop. I don't have a state-of-the-art shop, but I make a lot of these uh, as gifts uh, for friends. You know, you can even sell them if you want. Uh, they're not that hard to make. Let's go over it. Let's take a closer look first. They still have a little polyurethane on them. Uh, I put a third coat on. So... They're drying now. And these are identical tables. They have a little reveal. And they're level, painted, uh, two coats of white paint. I mix it with a little water. I uh, spray them. And I do a little dry brush at the end with a sponge brush just to clear up any uh, streaks or just to make it like a nice stain. You can see the grain a little bit because this is a good grain on this pine, believe it or not, on this 2x3. All right, let's go over the steps. All right, so here's some of the tools I use. You don't necessarily need all of these tools, um, but it's good to have them. So the first thing I use, I break everything down with the miter saw. But if you don't have a miter saw, you can definitely use a circular saw. I have a skill saw here, a couple of wireless, I'm sorry, a battery uh, circular saws I use. And also a table saw is really vital in a wood shop. Um, this is just a job site skill saw. I, I do love like this saw. Um, the, the worm drive sometimes is a little shaky, but it does work and cuts. You just got to replace the blades once in a while, which I do. Uh, planer is a big one. You don't need it, but it definitely helps keep everything smooth. Um, a square is good when you're putting the frames together. Drills, uh, drivers, impact drivers, ruler, brad nailer. It's important for me. Glue, a trim router. If you don't have a trim router or if you, you, know, you have a router tape, you also use a router table. I have a chintzy one. Here, uh, sanders. You do a lot of sanding with these. I have an orderable sand sander and also a belt sander. I have a couple other uh, sanders up top too. Um, and that's about it. Obviously, you need your, your screws. Uh, so I use pocket screws typically to put these together, two inch. Typically, I use also I use these tabletop fasteners for the, for the tabletops, uh, allow for wood movement. And, um, and stains. Obviously, you need your stains. Um, there's multiple stains you can use. I have the special walnut for this order. It's going to be special walnut, top and bottom shelves, and it's going to be a white stain. I mix with paint um, for the uh, for the frames. Also, I either use the Osmo uh, poly for the the protect it, or I use a shellac or uh, the polyurethane. Polyurethane I typically use for uh, especially for pine softwoods. Uh, this gives you a nice little wax coat and a little bit of protection. Um, I'm going to be using 2x3 wood for the frames and I'm going to be using 1x12 for the bottom shelves, pine. I'm going to use a 5 quarter by 12 for the top tabletops. Uh, I'm going to also be using some um, these little 2x2s two for the little V's I put on, on the ends. Also I, I do have a lot of hardwoods here. I have some walnut, I have some oak. Up top here, I have some more oak. I have some maple and poplar. Uh, I have poplar everywhere. I also have some more oaks, little oaks. I'm um, sorry, walnut slabs down here. Some poplar here. Some oak, white oak. Um, some maple. I have some purple heart, but most people want pine. These are uh, rustic farmhouse type tables, so they try to keep the cost down. And also, they like the little rustic look sometimes. Um, the walnut looks too good, I guess you could say. Um, but that's about all you need. If you, and if you don't have a, a planer, you can do a hand planer. I have a couple down here, a couple hand planers. Uh, it's real dusty in here. This is, this is a true workshop. Um, I don't really have great dust protection or dust collection in here. Uh, the other thing you're going to need is clamps. And that's probably the most important tool. I have uh, plenty of clamps up here. The big ones I have. Um, I have a bunch of parallel clamps, cabinet clamps, MF style 
clamps, uh, cray clamps, which are real good to have. Uh, quick release clamps, J style clamps, all kinds of clamps. You, you, you can't never have enough clamps, as they say. Also, um, if you don't have a table saw, you got to use your skill saw. You can also use, you know, an edge roller or, you know, a big um, level to kind of use as a track, makeshift track saw. Um, that's about it. I think that's all you really need. Really, you know, obviously, you need your mm -hmm. eye protection. Um, your protections go on too when you're professionally running the planer. Um, a mask. I do have mask. I, I, I will wear it. Not all the time, but I do have mask gloves if you need them. It's cold here. Um, I think that's about all I need. Obviously, tape measures and, you know, um, measuring tools, little speed squares and stuff like that. Um, I use for the tabletop when, I, when I'm measuring them out. Um, and a good flat surface also. And if you see here, I also have like a... Um, this it's crappy but it's a vinyl floor I use that as a good test when I lay my tables down to, to know they're going to be level because a lot of people use um, vinyl floors now you know so it's a good thing to make sure your tables are level and test it um, that's about it I think that's it um, let's get started okay so that's we're going to start the first thing I do is I break down the wood the framing wood by length so we're going to start with the legs which are going to be 21 and one quarter uh, and I have eight of these legs and I also have a sketch up on this but this is just a rough picture so the legs are going to be 21 and a quarter with the top it's going to be five quarter if they're sanding and planing it will probably be down to almost an inch maybe just over an inch inch and an eighth possibly a sixteenth uh, I also have these upside down V's and I use two by twos for these and these are at, I believe 15 inches long cut at a 22 degree 22 and a half degree angle the, the the meat towards the middle. I don't want them to, uh, too much connected because I have to. Let, it's easier to paint if I have a little space there. Um, the bottom shelves here will be uh, one by twelve. I'll rip that down to I believe seventeen inches long, and I think it's going to be three pieces uh, that will fit. I'm going to say they're um, uh, four inches, or whatever, in in width. But it will, we'll measure them. And like I said, the top is going to be twenty two inches across and twenty two inches um, front to back. Um, that's about it. So let's, let's start. We're going to start with the legs. Like I said, 21 and a quarter. Uh, the front pieces here, since the legs are going to be a little thicker on the sides, will be 17 inches here, which is which is this. And the side stretchers here and aprons will be 15 inches, which is here. And like I said, the, um, the two by twos will be at 15 and a half inches long, and they'll be at a 22 degree angle cut uh, the, the, to match up down the bottom and top. Of the frames, and we'll start. So we'll start with the legs first. Eight legs, eight stretchers at 15, eight stretchers at 17. All right, let's go. Now I cut these. Um, I either use the first piece as my template, or you can also use a track system here, as you can see, with a stop block. Um, these is just a little easier, faster to do it this way. Um, and I have probably just as much luck being consistent. So let's cut all these. Make sure you're seeing. Okay, so once I have all my wood cut the length, uh, this is the aprons. 17, 15, and 21 roughly inch legs. I'm going to run them through the, the planer now uh, to get them to the thickness and the um, and even the width that I want. Cause I, I'm going to run them through on the on the edge here, since I don't have a, a jointer. Even though I sometimes will use the table saw, and I may run through the table saw too. But um, right now I'm just going to run through the planer, and we'll get them to the right thickness. Okay, so it's the next morning. So my next move is to pocket hole all of my aprons and stretchers here. So I take the side that I don't like the most, and I'll have that side exposed or used for the pocket holes. I mean, both sides are pretty good here. You know, I 
tell the difference. So that's one set. Just kind of lay them out so I don't drill them to the wrong side. Like I said, both sides are pretty good. And I'm still going to still going to sand these so these haven't been sanded yet so I'll, I'll pocket hold them then I'll sand both sides start with 80 grit and then I'll go up to about um, say 150 to 220 on these uh, I'll do a finished sand at the end when they're assembled but also right now I just use this little old DeWalt drill because it has the bit I just don't want I have, I have a ton of drills here but I just had this one set up you know for the Craig I have a little cray clamp and I have this little, I think it's like a um, T or whatever, the K, whatever. It's, it's the $20 or $30 uh, jig. Um, one of the things I take pride in is I build a lot of furniture um, and I, I do it on a budget. I mean, I, I don't make it cheap, but I, I use cheaper tools or on a budget type tools because, you know, I'm busy, so it's hard to keep upgrading. You, you're constantly upgrading tools, unfortunately. But um, I kind of take pride in, in building this stuff, you know. And I'm stubborn too, so I like to, I like doing it my way. So I just use this little Craig jig. Make sure your um, your settings are set for the for the two inch screw or one and a half drill. Clamp it down. Probably help if I plug this in. This is a wired one. I'm so used to the battery. You can clamp it to the bench too if you like, but I just like to hold it. And there you guys. So it's going to be four on each stretcher and apron. I probably will upgrade this uh, this Craig. I was looking at the new one at Woodcraft the other day. This is so expensive, but I mean, you pay for it with your you know your profits and. Upgrading. I'm constantly upgrading, and the problem I'm having is this shop is is really not suitable for what I'm doing now because I'm growing, and I need to upgrade the power and things like that. Obviously, uh, better workspaces, and I'm about to build another shed out back for all my garage stuff, like lawn mowers and bikes, and you know, yard tools and car tools and stuff like that. And really, I'm kind of outgrowing the space. And I don't know, so I have to make it, make it, and also my fishing stuff here is very important to me, which is getting ruined. I do clean, take them out, clean them. Uh, I blow them out with the um, air compressor and I uh, rinse them out with fresh water because I do use these in the salt a lot, these rods. Um, some of my rods are I have in the house now too, so I'm constantly, I'm out growing the space. And as you see, it's a mess in here, but this is what it looks like when you're working. I'm, I'm busy constantly doing two or three orders a week minimum. and and you know we're doing we're doing well for what we have and and I like I said I take pride in doing this without breaking the bank you know and um, I'm not saying you do things cheap I, I mean I put you know the best quality I could get for what the customers to pay for um, but I try to do you know like I don't have the saw stop a five thousand hour table saw you know I have a little portable saw and, and part of it's due to space I don't have the space for a cabinet saw in here you know. Um, I am shopping for a uh, joiner uh, planer combo uh, with the Hilka heads. I am probably going to end up doing that, and I am going to get a bandsaw probably. But my other uh, difficulty is is um, I'm going to be moving from here, you know, uh, probably the next year. So it's like, do I want to really want to invest in all these tools? Because my house I, that I have is a townhouse. I don't have a place to put all this stuff. So I have to kind of be lean and mean with my equipment. So... Uh, we'll see. You know, I'm, I am shopping for a space down there, a shop down in North Carolina. So we'll see. Um, but um, this, I mean, it does work, and, I'm, and it suits me well. But be, would would I like to have, you know, a big Laguna or saw stop table saw cabinet cabinet saw? Abs absolutely. 
um, have a big, you know, four by eight or four by ten workspace so I can put the table saw on with you know a rattle table built in. Yeah, I would love to do that. Um, and I know I could build it. I just don't have the space right now here. Um, so we're, we're we're doing what we can. All right, let's finish these up. Okay, so now I have all of my stretchers and aprons uh, pocket screw or pocket hold. So now I'm going to uh, cut my groove in for my tabletop fasteners. And and that's these guys here. So I'll put this here for now. So what I do is I take the ones I want for my and I only put them in the top aprons, the stretchers. Uh, so these I pick which ones I want to be the top. Like this one will be the top piece. It really doesn't matter. I like to look for anything that has like any imperfections on the top edge that I want to hide. And all these look good so it doesn't matter. So like this. If you really don't want to think about it, you can do them all. I mean, I've done that in the past. I just cut them all. And these will be the bottoms here. All right, so next thing I do is I set a measurement, and I believe it is I want to say six sixteenths of an inch. And I set my fence. Using a quick speed square here. Lock it in. I always put a little clamp on here too, just to stay side of the fence. And ooh, the most important part is then I lower my blade. To the height of fastener which is about there should be good and then I'll run through them to get my goggles on All right. this is called like a this is a dangerous cut so what I'll do is I'll turn the saw on and I'll drop it down slowly past where the pocket hole is and I'll glide it through and I'll pull it back up. You can set a stop block up if you want. I just kind of eye it. I just want to get really a couple of inches here. So, so. That is pretty much perfect as you can see it lays flush so pretend that this here is the the bottom of the top of your tabletop and this is your top stretcher so it'll sit like this and then you just pile hole a self-centered uh, bit and screw them in to the top and this allows for tabletop uh, movement if need be you know, if your, your tabletop wood does move especially pine will move you know, up to a quarter inch a year sometimes, you know, depending on weather temperatures and things like that. All right, so let's knock the rest of these guys. Okay, so now I have my, uh, my grooves cut into the top for the tabletop fasteners. Pocket holes done. Um, now it's time to do <laughs> my least favorite part of this. So now what I do is I, um, I put like a little chamfer edge on all four sides of the, the legs and two sides on the bottom stretchers and one side of the top. So I'm going to do a ton of route now. So what I do, I just set my own, I put a little chamfer bit in. It's, this is a little coat, I'm sorry, a Bosch coat. A little, um, Little uh, router here, and I mean you can also use it if you have a router table, 
But I have that stuff for half inch, and I don't feel like messing with that right now. So I'm just going to run this, and this is probably more realistic for people too, because most people are not, not going to have router, router tables that are building, you know, a farmhouse or rustic furniture. Typically, um, if you're a high-end woodworker, yeah, you're going to have a router table, and I do like using it, but it creates so much mess. And you know, right now I've set up for something else for some cabinet stuff I'm, I'm doing. All right, so. So I just run this through. So I set my um, my my height here, um, and I really just kind of eye it up because I just want a little edge, and I'm and I'll mess with it, make it sure it's perfect. I like to wear gloves too when I'm running the router. I have cut my finger with this before. So like I said, I'm gonna do all four edges, and then I'm, when I'm done doing this, I'm gonna sand. I'm gonna sand. Start with an 80 grit. And then work my way up to, I think, a 150 grit on these. And then at the end, when they're all assembled, I'll go to like a 220 grit um, for the frame. All right, so let's, let's plug this in. Okay, now the most tedious part of doing these. Um, I'm going to sand everything. I'm going to start with 80 grit and then I'm going to go work my way up. So let's, let's plug in. Let's go. Okay, so everything is routed pl or planed, routed, and sanded uh, up to 150 grit. So this is how it looks. If you see um, chamfer edge on all four sides, this is going to be one of the legs, and that's how it will look. Um, I will do one more sanding when it's all assembled, you know, because obviously there'll be some glue and you know other stuff on there too. I have to clean up, but uh, this is how they look. And here's the apron and stretchers. This is the top one. A little chamfered on the bottom. And the bottom ones have chamfered on two sides that were really exposed, so that would be the bottom. So that's what they'll say. So these are ready to go now. So now the, the fun part comes where I'm going to assemble these guys. And these are the tops with the grooves in them and these are the bottoms go I can always tell too so I don't even label them because I know it's the way I cut them and route them and clean them and sand them and also with the the tabletop fastener the groove in the in the top all right so now we're ready to assemble so for this I will need square two inch pocket screws um, at least one or two good clamps. I'll start with one now. Also, I use my uh, Craig clamp. Also, had these little spacers here that we use for my reveal. So I'll show you that. And I'm going to need the driver with the Craig uh, square. Actually, I use my own, but. Uh, I'll leave this guy here. And a little glue. I, I typically, you know, the glue I'm, I'm 
questionable about because if I'm using two inch pocket screws, they pretty much hold. But I will put a little glue, especially if I don't think I have a tight joint. But uh, I don't like putting the glue because it really makes more of a mess. And also, if you put these things together and you start noticing a wobble for whatever reason, whether it be you know one of these legs are cut, you know, it's 30 second of an inch shorter than the other, they shouldn't be. But you know, wood is a little bowed. You know, wood doesn't always square up right. You know, even though the square might say it's right, but when you put them together, you start seeing you can see a little bit of a wobble. So now when you glue them, it's kind of permanent. Now you, you kind of have to break them, get them apart. So that's why I typically don't like using glue or a lot. I'll put a little bit on, but not too much. And I use a Type on three or Type on two, um, typically. But I mainly use the glue for the tabletops, and I also pocket screw them too. But uh. I will put a little glue, not too much. Okay, so now here's where, to me, stuff starts coming together where you, where I assemble the main frame. So this will be the top apron piece here, stretcher, whatever you want to call it. And I have little spacers here, as you can see, to give a little reveal. I like to have a reveal. Put the legs butt up against it so they're flush. Important that they're square. So now all four front frames are built, uh, assembled, I should say. And what I do now is I put them up on a level surface, obviously as level as you get. Just space them out. Use my reveal spacers. And this is very vital here because sometimes when you clamp these together, they can kind of pull up. So you've really got to make sure these hold down and stay level, and stay flat. So now I'm going to be putting the 15 inch pieces on. The first ones that they were 17 inch and with the thickness of the thinner side of the legs gives it about 20 inch um, frame and the tops are going to be 22 inches so it's about 19 and a half so it gives me about an inch um, about two and a half inches or whatever overhang which is which is good. So now when I put these together at the bottom with the thicker part of the leg, I don't need a 15 inch stretcher and apron. Make sure to get these nice and level. And this gives me about 19 and 3 quarters. So they stay pretty square. About 19 and 3 quarters both ways, 19 and a half. Alright, so now this is like I said important. Sometimes sometimes I will use the cry clamp to hold them down. Well, let's see if we get any uh, pull. You don't want it too tight. Make sure everything's square. My spacers are in for my reveal, as you can see down here. 
you look close and the legs are laying flat there you go the chamfer edges kind of will be exposed which I think is a good look right, just a little tighter all right now I'm ready to screw these in If your holes are drilled right, you should not see your screws. Okay, so now both frames are built. Uh, they look nice and level. And if you look up the top here, you'll see the groove for the tabletops on all four sides. Oop. As you can see, all four sides have the um, tabletop fastener, so I could just put them in where I want here. Uh, show an example here. Just pop them in. As you can see right there. And that's where the top will go. So now my next uh, step is to, okay, so this is the side here. The wider leg is the side. And this is the front. So the front will stay as is, but the sides, I'm going to put um, some upside down V's right here. They're going to be like a 22, uh, 22 degree angle, and they're going to be about 15 inch long 2 by 2s which I'm going to mill up now. I usually mill them up after. Sometimes I do it all at once when I mill this out, but um, it's a little bit different wood. And also sometimes, you know, it could fluctuate. It could be um, 22 degrees, uh, it could be 25 degrees, depending on how long I cut it. So I, I like to just cut one out just to uh, whatever. But I'd like to just do like a piece, of, just a little piece of like one by uh, maybe three quarters of an inch thick, three quarters of an inch uh, deep, wide, and I'll brad nail it here and use as a platform. Use as still on two sides, but I could do all four sides too. Depend on how the wood lays, um, but you could just do two. Then you'll screw them in at the end. All right, so let's let's do the upside down V's now. All right, so I set my thing at 22 and a half degree. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to put these little V's on. So I do use little glue with these. Now there's two ways I do these. Uh, lately I've just been brad nailing them in. Only because um, I use, uh, you could use like two inch or three inch screws, two and a half inch screws, and drill a hole in the top and the bottom and kind of hold them on. I just found that I, you know, this wood's so thin, these V's, a lot of times I was splitting them, so it just really wasn't worth it. So it just, and it's just a little easier to brad nail them. And if you see, I have this uh, little center point here marked. So I'm just gonna put one brad nail in now, just to hold it. And then look at the next one. Make sure everything looks good. Just put a little glue. Yep, 
let's make sure they're same reference. That looks perfect. And I try to gap them the same on the top so I have a little bit of a reveal here. Hopefully you can see. And I'm using a one and a half inch brad nail. Brad nails here. Okay, so the next step is to measure the bottom frame for the uh, bottom shelf platform I'm going to build in here. So it's going to need 17 inches. 17. I'll just measure across to the safe side, keep it the side of the so Just under 17. So 17 is what I need across the sides. Alright, so we'll cut some one by out and we'll brad nail them in now. This is just old scrap that I had laying around from other projects. If not, then I'll just take a, some one by and I'll just rip it down to three quarter inch to an inch. There. Alright, so next step is to cut uh, 5 quarter by 12. I cut 4 of these out at 22 inches long. Uh, this is for the top and I also cut some 1 by 12. I didn't video that. And I cut that at 5 and a half inches. I'm sorry, 17 inches long and 5 inches, and I ripped it on the table so all 5 inches, inches wide. Um, so they will slide right into the table. So let's finish cutting the, the tops. Okay, so I'm going to measure my cut at 5 and a half. Obviously it's going to be 5 and 5 eighths, but you take an eighth off of the blade curve. So it will be 5 and a half exactly once cut. So I'm going to rip these uh, bottom shelves, these one bys to five and a half wide.
right, so I'm going to glue up the two tabletops now, and then we'll stain that tomorrow and assemble these tables. Uh, the paint it. Uh, it's really messy in here right now. It's tight. So i got to make some room. i got a couple orders in here. All right, so let's get these glued up overnight and pocket screw them in, and we'll stay in the morning. Hopefully get them shipped out the, uh, the next day. Alright, let's glue this up. So I glue and I also throw pocket screws in. Sometimes I'll do some dial joinery too. Pocket holes are a little faster. Use my uh, glue spreader, my finger. Okay, both tops are gluing up. I'll let them sit overnight and we'll clean them up. Uh, we'll belt sand them, then we'll go 80 grit, and then we'll go back up to uh, about 120 grit and maybe the 220. Or 150 grit and then 220 grit, or yeah, 220 grit to finish them off. Um, yeah, and then we'll stain. Otherwise, they look good. They came together pretty good, and I'll let them clamp overnight. All right, almost done. I'm gonna call it tonight. Alright, so we're going to put the top on, so I lay the top down on a tail, uh, face down, the good side down, and I take my little squares here, speed squares, and Let me 
make sure it lines up. <laughs> Try to take the other one and I do the ends. take my, um, my Z clips, put them in the grooves that I cut out earlier. Okay, so now they're in. So now I'm going to put the bottom shelf brackets in. Spacer. Actually, I'll use it. spacers. Make it good. Oh, maybe not. So, what you could do now, you could actually clamp them. Hold them in place. Tables are officially done. I just put a last coat of polyurethane on. Actually came out pretty nice. Also made them a little table too, they added on. It's still drying the polyurethane. And these are a uh, special walnut stain. It's like a light brown. But see, and actually next to these are tables I'm also building. These are actually real walnut tops and bottom. I just have a little Osmo in there. I still have to do a little sand in a little another coat. These have polyurethane, triple thick. Oh, I may have put polyurethane on these guys too. I'm not sure. I doubt it. I must, you're not really supposed to mess with these too much. But that's two orders here. These are for me. Well, hopefully. Alright, we're going to ship these out. 
tomorrow. Let them dry overnight. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, anybody can make these. They're pretty simple. Uh, just take some time, patience. Just do it.